Hello, welcome to the Voyage of the Monk podcast, a monthly, probably, podcast where I, Fawn, who studied Irish folklore for a long while <laughs> at UCD, I can't remember the amount of years because I'm bad at numbers, <laughs> um, and my lovely wife, Alice, who is a artist with almost no folklore experience. <laughs> Uh, discuss the voyage of St. Brendan the Navigator. So when we left our heroes, St. Brendan and his monks had just had a description of a vision by St. Berinthus. He had described a vision he'd had of how his son, Murnoch, had set sail looking for paradise across the sea and had landed on an island that was next to another island. Now, the first island was beautiful and gorgeous and all of the trees were full of fruit and there were all lovely herbs and plants everywhere. And a beautiful young man told them that either this island that they were on or the next island that they weren't allowed to go to was the Garden of Eden. Oh. <laughs> it was very unclear in the, in the writing which island he was talking about. Uh-huh. Okay. Anyway, they left that island and they went back to Ireland uh, and arrived at St. Brendan's Monastery like almost immediately after Berinthus finished his description and Brendan and his monks, they realise that these guys, their clothes smell of paradise. So Brendan decides, fuck it, and they all set, they all are going to set sail. I feel like I may have asked this last time, but what does paradise smell like? I don't know. <laughs> Probably, judging by how the island was described, I'm guessing fruit and herbs. So, like your candle collection. I don't have any fruit or herby candles. <laughs> you got some, like, like your pumpkin spice ones. Those are herbs and... and like, I guess. You, you've got some apple scented. I guess. <laughs> Maybe that's paradise to me. Maybe it depends on the person. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they were all smelling something different. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, there's a lot of comments I could make, but probably should not. <laughs> um. <laughs> Alright, so, this week. Brendan chooses 12 monks to join him on the voyage. They prepared by taking communion and fasting for 11 days. Because the best thing to do when you're going to voyage for 7 years is to not eat for over a week. Yeah, that seems pretty counterintuitive. Uh, we are going to just going into fasting for a bit it is probably um they're probably not being hyperbolic about it being 11 days they probably are like drinking water and having a little bit of bread in the morning and that kind of thing not a not a 100 percent. we do not eat i mean i figured because otherwise they would have just you know fucking died and i have heard that fasting can be very very good spiritually um in a community setting uh, the fact that everyone is is doing it together and going through it together um, helps to helps everyone to bond. I guess. Like I've seen um, Muslim people describe Ramadan that way, and like the kind of collective effort and collective um, oh, what's a good way of putting it? Um, I don't want to say. So suffering because it doesn't sound quite right um collective sacrifice i think is a better way of putting it um as a way of forging community ties that sounds nice yeah i kind of like that idea I, for me and again I, I i do really want to emphasize that i definitely don't mean to like dismiss anybody's positive experience of religion Especially if you're genuinely getting something out of it. But for me, it feels a lot more like more of the, the asceticism. It Do you like, think? I think there is an ascetic element to it. And like we were saying last time, there's asceticism and there's ascetic. Yeah. yeah. Like, there, there, if, if it's being done in like conjunction with like community work and community building, which, um, as 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 I was saying, fasting can be. Mm -hmm. Um, then yeah, grand. I don't see a problem with it. But there are some times where it's done in extreme isolation. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um where it doesn't just feel like potentially unhealthy, it feels a bit 
self-aggrandizing. It does. And like, what are what are you getting out of that that you can't just like get out of, I don't know, reading your holy book? Or even just kind of, like, meditating. Like, why do you need to, like, deprive yourself of food to to be closer to God? Well, I don't know. Um... And, and I don't necessarily mean, like... I meant, like, depriving yourself of food in, like, the, the really, 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 really extra ascheticism way. Mm-hmm. Not, like... And the way... I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to be a dick. Like, I genuinely don't. I definitely don't want to be dismissive either. But, I don't know, maybe it's just because I was not really raised religious in the slightest. Uh, I, I wasn't either, but I can see, like... I can see how um, a certain amount of empathy could be generated. Yeah. Yeah, I um, guess that's... Yeah, that makes sense. Like, it, it helps you have more, relate more to people who are themselves deprived by, um, against their will. Yeah. Um, but I do feel like there's a danger to it. Yeah. Um, of going into, like, the, and, and you'll see it more as, as the story progresses. You'll see it does go into that kind of danger, the, the danger of, like, Using it as, as, as a kind of status symbol. Uh-huh. Using your deprivation as, as a means of, of social, um, social rank. Yeah, so I guess it comes back to, like, what we were talking about before, like, asceticism and asceticism. Yeah, yeah, it, it comes down to how it's being done, who's doing it, um, why they're doing it. All right. Anyway, <laughs> that that was one paragraph. <laughs> but just as Brendan and his twelve monks were about to set sail, two more ran up to the boat and asked to join them. And Brendan warns them that if they do join them, one of them is going to go to hell. <laughs> so the two of them decide to come along anyway. Okay. <laughs> Why would one of them have to go to hell? It's not that they have to. It's like a prophecy. What? <laughs> He's like, oh, I can, I can take you, but I have foreseen that if two more people come, one of them will go to hell. I feel like maybe he was just being a dick. Like, he didn't actually have a prophecy. He was just like, mm, what can I say to dissuade these people from coming? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. One of them's going to hell. Something similar has happened in other uh, voyage stories. Um, I can't remember if it was the voyage of Bran or the voyage of Meldoon off the top of my head. It might even have been both. But just before they set sail, two more lads come along and say, we'd like to join you as well. And then the leader, can't, again, can't remember if it was Bran or Meldoon. I should write these things down. <laughs> um, says, like, oh, you can join us. But one of you won't be coming back. Yeah, I feel like your man is taking the piss, like... Like, that's just gotta be like, oh, I don't want these people to come. What can I say to make them not come? And then it just doesn't work. <laughs> so now they're sitting there like, oh, well, shit, now I gotta find some way for one of these motherfuckers to actually go to hell. Well, <laughs> so I don't look like an asshole. <laughs> well, do you think one of them is going to go to hell? No! <laughs> you don't think one of them is going to go to hell? No! Okay, but well, we'll see. But that's the thing about me. I don't necessarily believe in a heaven or a hell. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go into a quote. Uh, so this is... um, Yeah, we're just going into a quote. Okay. And then St. Brendan bade the shipmen to wind up the sail, and forth they sailed in God's name, so that on the morrow they were out of sight of any land, and eleven days and eleven nights after they sailed plain east, and then they saw an island far from them. And they sailed thitherward as fast as they could, and they saw a great rock of stone appear above all the water, and three days they sailed about it ere they could get into a place. So basically, after three days of circling the island, they finally find a place to land. Just a big island. Yep. Or, or uh, just a very confusing one. Like, with a, with a really weird yeah, coastline. Yeah, shit, I don't know. I don't know. 
Uh, so when they stepped ashore, a fair hound appeared and lay down at Brendan's feet, and Brendan was delighted. I would be too! I fucking love puppers! <laughs> he was so happy, he said, Be of good cheer, for our Lord hath sent us his messenger to lead us into some good place. Because much like myself, uh, St. Brendan does assume that every single dog is an angel. Oh. Well, yeah, of course, it's a fucking dog! <laughs> so the dog leads them to a great hall with a feast all laid out. And so they start to eat and drink and they find beds to go to sleep. Did somebody give the dog a treat? I, I, I hope so. Give the puppy a treat! <laughs> give him a little treat for being a good boy. But also, like, they've just followed this dog <laughs> to a random house <laughs> and ate all the food <laughs> and then went to bed. It's giving, it's giving Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Yeah, like, <laughs> you're lucky you were right, Brendan. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very Goldilocks and the Three Bears. But luckily no bears show. Oh, well, that's good, I guess. <laughs> Other than Brendan, like, if you look at the statue, he, that's yeah, a bear. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> it's, fine. it's fine. The mic fell. It's fine. All right, so another, another bit of quoting. And on the morrow, they returned again to their ship and sailed a long time in the sea. After air, they could find any land, till at the last, by the purveyance of God, they saw far from them a full fair island, full of green pasture, wherein were the whitest and greatest sheep that ever they saw, for every sheep was as great as an ox. And soon after came to them a goodly old man, which welcomed them and made them good cheer and said, This is the island of sheep, and here is never cold weather, but ever summer, and that causeth the sheep to be so great and white, they eat of the best grass and herbs that is anywhere. I love that for the sheep. <laughs> Just very large. Yeah, living their best life. <laughs> and then he told them if they sailed east, they'd reach a good island to celebrate Easter on. So they set off and did find a land. But there were loads of rocks in the water surrounding it. And when they finally found a safe island to land on, the other 14 monks, they started preparing dinner, but Brendan stayed on the ship. And we have another quote. Okay. And then when the fire was right hot, and the meat nigh sudden, then this island began to move. Whereof the monks were afraid, and fled anon to the ship, and left the fire and meat behind them, and marvelled sore of the moving. And St. Brendan comforted them, and said that it was a great fish named Jason, which laboureth night and day to put his tail in his mouth, but for greatness he may not. What? what? So they land on an island. Uh-huh. Right? Uh-huh. And the other monks, they uh -huh. get out. And they, uh -huh. and they start a campfire. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And when the meat was nearly uh -huh. cooked, uh -huh. the island started to move. So they ran back to the ship uh -huh. because they were scared shitless. Basically. Yeah, as you would be. So Brendan started laughing. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. He said, this is not an island. It's a fish. It's the biggest fish in the sea and its name is Jason. Okay, so uh, a couple things. <laughs> if Brendan knew it was a fucking fish, <laughs> why would you not say something? <laughs> Like, let's just start there. <laughs> Second of all, Jason? Jason? Okay, so... Let's see. J-A-S-C-O-N-Y-E. It might be Jasoni. Jason... I... Jasoni. But it's, 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 it's a permutation of Jason. I, I, I've seen some Latin sources say Jasonius. But it's fucking Jason. Like, the fish's name is Jason. That's that's just the name of a man. That's just, like, a guy. You're either, like, 
in your white chinos at a barbecue named Jason or like you're Jason fucking Todd and your life sucks because Bruce is your adoptive <laughs> father. I feel like there is no in between. You're not a fucking fish. I'll tell you that much. Jason, <laughs> sir. <laughs> I feel like Jason is is one of those '90s kids. He's 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 going for the '90s grunge look with the with the red pla red uh, plaid jacket or shirt. And no, everything. no, 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 no. See, he's he's like a '90s hot heartthrob and like a high school show, like a sitcom where there's like a laugh track and stuff. He's got like the '90s boy haircut and like he probably does wear like a giant plaid shirt, plaid plaid. plaid. He probably Unless does. You're Scottish, then it can be played. Yeah, he probably does at one point point wear like a giant plaid shirt, but like he's just a guy. How often does he wear a, ba a backward baseball? Probably hat? at least a couple of times. But like he's just a guy. He's not a fish. He's a fish. He's not a fish. He's a gigantic fish, who's constantly trying to put his tail in his mouth, but he's too big to fit his tail in his mouth. Why is the fish also a dog? <laughs> I have so many questions. See, I, Brendan! I, I, I hear fish that's trying to put its tail in its mouth. I think Jormungundr, the world serpent from Norse mythology. <laughs> You've got a dog chasing its tail. Brendan! Uh... <laughs> but yeah, I... I do... <laughs> Brendan is taking the piss. Like, he has to be. <laughs> there is no other interpretation of this situation where he doesn't warn Why them. would you not say something? Because, because he laughs at them. <laughs> He's doing this on purpose. He has You're a pure asshole. <laughs> He's sitting there watching his fucking monks try and make dinner. Dinner's ruined now, buddy. Thanks. <laughs> Not only did they get the absolute piss scared out of them by this moving island, who guess what is a fish named Jason, they don't have any dinner. So they're scared and hungry. Brendan, you're an asshole. And, and they probably had their feelings. They probably had their feelings hurt because they're supposed to trust this man and he's just pointing and laughing at them. He's taking the piss. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> that's where I wanted to end our excursion. God! It finishes with them fleeing Jason. Jason's not a fish name, okay? You don't name your fish Jason. Name every fish no. Jason now. <laughs> I want to see horror movies like Black Lagoon remakes where the monster is called Jason. No more Jason Voorhees. We, we are going to, we're going to disassociate that name with that character forever now because there will be so much saturation of fish monsters named Jason. That's what Stop I trying to make Jason to. happen. It's not going to happen. J Jason will happen. Jason, Jason is inexorable, inevitable. <laughs> Jason is the future. I bet 20 bucks. It will never happen. What if it happens after we're dead? What do we do if then? You're not getting your 20 bucks, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> because I'll be dead. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good side of Brendan's point. Brendan's a now. dick. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this episode of uh, The Voyage of the Monk. I know we came up with a sign off last time, but I can't remember what it is. <laughs> So prepared are we? Oh no, I remember. I remember. <laughs> Come back and join us next month. Same monk time, same monk channel. I feel like we could have let that go. <laughs> no, we could have let that go. It could have died. No. <laughs>